Right. So I said this stuff may not have actually sunk in yet, but don't worry, we're actually going to go through some real queries. I'm going to share three actual queries with you that are powering the website right now. We're going to look at the A to Z list. We're going to look at how these player profile cards are constructed. And we're going to look at matches played in a season. And I've picked these because they allow me to show off different parts of what things I like about Cypher and some other techniques as well that we've learned along the way that may not be immediately obvious when you first get started with it. A to Z list. As part of the fan zone, they've got a page called the Player Library, which I think has got something like 758 players listed on it at the moment. Could be more. I haven't looked at the stats for a week or two. And this page is powered by Neo4j, running entirely on Neo4j. And it's the first page we built uh, for this client. Uh, so, you know, the first thing we want to do is we want to see the A to Z list. That was the client as sort of the litmus test to see whether or not they were happy with what we were doing. Now, the nice thing about Cypher is you describe the, if you describe the problem out loud, loud, say what you're trying to do, that's normally the basis of your Cypher query. Um, so, if we look at our entities, um, we talked talk to the data historian, and he said, right, you're looking for players who've had a spell at Chelsea. Find those players. Find players who've had a spell at Chelsea. That's, that, he said, that's how you do it. Um, and in Neo4j, it's really easy to express. Now, we don't have a pool of players. We have a pool of people, which include players and non-players as well, who are in the data set. Um, some of those have had spells, so we go and find those. And we go and find those who've had spells at Chelsea. And that's how you match the record. It's that straightforward. That's the question mark I sent out as well, did you? Right, we're going to get on to that in a moment. Nope, nope. <laughs> this is good. More questions are great. And then once we've found those, we just have to tell Neo4j what to return. But that's, that's, that's the full query to produce that A to Z page. Hopefully, you'll agree with me that that's pretty readable. That page actually had two sections. We're going to come on to that in a moment. Well spotted. Well spotted. And I see it turning to all people who were there, not just players. I have a slide for that as well in a moment. <laughs> this is awesome. This is why I love, love talking to small groups. You, yeah, you're on a stage of 200 people. You d people are thinking that, I'm sure, but they're not, they can't say it in a lar large auditorium, um, except for the ones on the very front. They're the ones you watch out for. <laughs> now, uh, there's three things I want to highlight about the query. And the first one was your question about what's that syntax. So string matching in Neo4j is case sensitive. I'm used to case insensitive matching. So what you're forced to do is use a regex in order to match your strings in reality. Because um, the last thing you want to do is start forcing all your data to be lowercase. And then force, you, know, you can do that and then force all your inputs to be lowercase. But you kind of lose some richness with that. Uh, with that, what's the, the tilde? Is that like a kind of that's any, anywhere within? No, but the equals tilde is how you tell it you're running a regex. Oh, that's the regex. That's the regex um, match. Which is very Ruby-esque, isn't it? It's, don't know about that. My Ruby's long gone. Um, but this is built on Java. And it's using whatever, it's not using industry standard PCRE regu regular expressions, sadly. It's using whatever ships with the JVM, I assume. Um, so you've got, a, if you want to do complex regexes, you've got to learn the Java syntax for it. And um, there'll be a page on uh, Neo4j's docs about that. But that's string matching. So I, I'm in the habit of every time I'm doing string matching, I always write it as a regex. Um, so far, the performance hasn't been an issue for me. Um, I'm not going to pretend this stuff's as fast as my SQL. It's nowhere near, but it's fast enough, which is what matters. And we're not throwing crazy money at this to run it either, to make it fast enough. You know, it runs on my Lenovo Ultrabook, which overheats if you open the lid. So and it still <laughs> runs fine. Second thing we want to talk about is duplicate rows. Some players may have played for the club more than once. They may have been sold, may have been sold on and then may have come back to the club. So 
Neo4j's results are row-oriented. They're not an object graph that comes back. And that took me a little while to get my head around. Even though it's normal with SQL, for some reason it didn't feel normal when I first started doing um, Neo4j. So the distinct keyword is very handy to say, uh, filter out all the duplicates. So I end up using that a lot. Not all the time, but I end up using it a lot. It's all, excuse me, it's normally the first tool I reach for if we're seeing duplicate data on the live website. And then we look at where we've actually imported duplicate data, which is a different issue and out of scope for this talk. And the third thing I want to talk about has got nothing to do with graphs whatsoever, but it's something we found we had to do um, after launching the site. See, this data set doesn't um, just power that website. It powers some internal tools as well. So there's a number of client applications, because we present this via an API. And we didn't want to duplicate um, all the logic inside all those different um, client applications, especially as player names, because players come from all over the world, so we're using UTF-8 everywhere in the data set, and Neo4j handles that without blinking. But some of the front-end stuff we're using, like WordPress, for example, absolutely choke on UTF-8. So what we found we had to do was we actually have an algorithm that converts UTF-8 into a rough ASCII equivalent. And then from that, we generate the sort, or the, the sort name that we use to make sure we're always returning records in the order we want them used. And that's, so we've centralized that kind of logic. That's nothing to do with graphs, but that's something we did and something I would recommend doing on most projects is that kind of thing. Not everything should live at the edge. Um, we're doing it to remove this duplication. And say, so especially as names have UTF-8 in, if we had to start duplicating um, our algorithm for condensing it down into all the different languages, because the, the, the client systems are not all written in one language, um, that's a lot of duplication. It's best to get rid of it. So Cypher queries, they look like how we describe what we're trying to do. Hopefully, I've shown that. Would you say that was fair? Awesome. Now, to come on to your point, the query that's live today has changed. And one thing we've done is we've collapsed the, tr the path that we're traversing. We've gone with direct relationships instead. So this is moving away from how people expect you to use a graph type system. Because we found it simplified things enormously. So this is what we were doing, and we went live with this, and it performs well. But we decided, partway through, to change the data set and create a direct relationship between people and the team. Because, as you said, quite rightly said, that pool of people includes people who haven't played for the club. They include managers. And we've got players who played for the club and then came back as managers as well, especially with a club like Chelsea, which has a rich history of that. So we introduced a direct relationship to clear this up. You can calculate that instead by with the path traversal and get the same result. But because this query is running every time you go to that page, there's no caching. When you go to that page, that query is running every single time. We're deliberately not caching anything at the minute. We thought it was easier just to collapse it. Um, when you read lots of stuff about how to use graphs and graph databases, it's all about path traversal. Don't get fixated on that. Change your data set to suit your circumstances. We're lucky, we own the data set, we can change it however we want within the limits of manpower. Um, you don't have to be stuck with traversing long graphs. Don't get caught with that if you don't want to. You, ca you, you can do that and it will work, but sometimes it makes sense to collapse it. So if you're using it regularly, create these new shorter paths. It's worth it. Um, now we're doing this for actually for two reasons, not one. And we're taking advantage of the fact with Neo4j, it's really easy to add different relationships between the same two records. And we're taking advantage of that because we had a change request from the client. As you rightly pointed out, it's not just an A to Z on that page anymore. At the top of the page is a list of the current squad, the people who are currently signed to the club and are actively playing. And that came in about a year into the project, something like that. And so to do that, we just wrote this query. And we've got, a uh, we've got a direct relationship going the other way. And once again, that could probably be calculated. But because we're running it all the time, we made a decision to collapse the path and just put an explicit relationship in. And then when a player's transferred out or retires, or you know, heaven forbid dies, which does happen, 
Um, we just remove that relationship at that moment in time because they're no longer part of the current squad. So it's a living data set. It's not fixed in stone. It's not immutable. Um, so collapse the paths. Hopefully that's covered all the questions you've raised so far. Have I missed any? No? Awesome. Now, I did want to put a slide in here just to make this explicit. I keep mentioning this. I'm not pretending you can't do this in a relational database. It's just so much easier to do it in a graph. Once you've done it in a graph, you won't want to go back to a relational database and do it in that. You really won't. It's just much easier to do. And the reason it's easier is all these things. We don't ship schema changes. We're not having to write migrations for Liquibase or Doctrine or anything like that at all. Because there's no extra columns for the foreign keys. There are no foreign key columns for us to, so we're not extending any tables and adding new columns at all. We're not having to worry about nulls in those new columns we've created. We just get on and do it. So I went back through our, 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 so our shipping list. And for, I only went back 12 months. But we've shipped three full schema set changes. So that's multiple changes as a bundle. We've shipped three bundles of those every month for the last 12 months without fail. Just banging them out. And if I was in, I was in a relational database, that would be three sets of migrations, whether Doctrine, Liquibase, or whatever tools you're using um, every month to write, deal with conflicts, deal with rollback, or pretend rollback's impossible, and whatever, if you were doing it in a traditional database. With Neo4j and graph databases, we don't do any of that. We just add the extra relationships and we carry on. We have done zero schema migrations on the graph database since it went live. Zero. How many of you spend time doing schema migrations? Yeah. Is it, a, is it a job you look forward to when it comes up? Nope. Definitely you're shaking the head. Would you miss it if it was gone? <laughs> OK. Um, now these slides actually weren't in, if I'd done this talk a month ago, these slides wouldn't have been in there because we take this for granted so much. Someone, when I was saying I was doing this talk and asked me what I was talking about, someone said, you've got to put that in there. And we're so used to it now on this project, we're just doing these changes because there's no schema migrations. Um, we've forgotten how painful it is to work with a relational database and do migrations. <laughs> 